For those of you joining us, thank you for being here. It's a full house. I appreciate your time. Uh, you'll make sure to sign in. The sign-in sheet is on the podium. <clears throat> that way we know who is here with us this evening. Uh, Councilor Loon, do we have a quorum, sir? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Uh, Pastor Chad Holtz here, are you in the house? Yes, sir. If you'll step forward, please, sir, and provide an invitation for us. I want to stress, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, we just pray that you be these city leaders as they make decisions that pertain to this community. And Lord, we pray that you would bring wisdom and knowledge and understanding to the situation. And Lord, we just pray that what is done is to help our community and help the people that are here. And Lord, we thank you for their time, their abilities, and their willingness to be here and their willingness to serve. God, we ask that you would bless this community, have your will and way in it. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Council, we do have an agenda before you. Uh, there were amendments at the staff level needing to be made. Uh, motion, uh, I can have a motion to amend the agenda. It needs to include item number four on the public hearing, which is uh, listed on your current agenda. Also, number two from unfinished business, which is an annex um, issue. Number two under unfinished business needs to be added as number five for public hearing. Make a motion the agenda be adopted as uh, corrected. Have a motion to upset. Second. Any discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so. Thank you, Council. Uh, this evening, we get to recognize a few of our elected. Uh, we get to recognize and celebrate two of our elected officials. They are continuing to increase their knowledge through education. Um, I'm proud to present Councilmember Hanna and Dr. Proctor with the following. Um, Councilmember Hanna, from the University of Georgia Carl Vincent Institute of Government and the Georgia Municipal Association, they hereby certify that Brandon G. Hanna has successfully completed the newly elected Officials Institute dated March 1st, 2024. Congratulations, sir. Uh, the mail is a little slow. I'll, I'll have to say the mail was a little slow, so these are dated uh, in advance. The University of Georgia Carl Vincent Institute of Government and the Georgia Municipal Association hereby certify that Sonny Proctor has successfully completed the requirements for Certificate of Achievement through the Harold Holtz Municipal Training Institute dated January 28, 2024. Congratulations, sir. Let's go grab a picture. Initiative, which is based off the uh, median income 
for the area. So one thing that I just wanted to put up here is the difference between the Jasper median income and the city of Atlanta median income because we are lumped in with Atlanta. So that for me, it, when you'll hear the other presentations from the applicants, um, I have asked for an additional uh, uh, condition that would put a lot for more people that make say $30,000, $35,000 a year qualify as well as the other units which are 47 and I think above, but they'll get more into that with you. So item number one is a request to rezone 100 Darnell Road, uh, 4.73 acres from C2 General Commercial to multifamily residential. So the existing conditions right now, it is vacant and wooded. It is has frontage on Darnell Road, and it is the 4.73. Uh, there are public utilities in the area and um, it is surrounded mostly by residential and then the commercial on the eastern side. So as you see here, you have the county area, so rural residential, highway business, um, agricultural, and then that C2 parcel, which is right behind Darnell, um, which is a commercial, which abuts that commercial Kroger uh, Home Depot area. So Darnell Road is a county road, uh, one of the conditions of approval would be to bring that road up to county spec, which is also the same spec that the city uses. So future development, Mac. As part of our, of part of our comprehensive plan, which is uh, part of something that the county does every five to ten years, updating it to make sure that we are going in a sustainable direction. We have our future development map that a lot of, basically outlines where we see our growth going in the future 10, 15, 20 years. So this right here where you see the arrow, uh, that is what is referred to as our, our West Jasper Gateway Corridor. And right now, as you see that red, the solid red is commercial. And then it follows, um, by adding this development, it'll follow the standard development patterns, which go commercial, multi-family residential, residential attached, and then out further to your suburbs, which are single, single family development. So this project is will consist of 38 units within two buildings. Um, the project that they are outlining is for the 60 to 80 percent of the median income. Um, and that's where I was saying that's a little bit high. Let's, let's get a couple of units in there in the 40 area to reach more of our Jasper residents. So this is what is known as affordable or workforce housing. This is not Section 8, this is not a HUD project. So these have different criteria in order to meet the standards of the Department of Community Affairs. So DCA um, has their applications once a year. They're due Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They are due um, May 17th. So um, this is a reward based. So um, usually the applicant here is somewhere in, in between August or November, whether they've been chosen, where the city has been chosen. So when we come down to our recommendations, to the left you see the um, drawing. Right now it's a concept plan. It has the two entrances off of Darnell. Uh, you see the two units, which will be which will house the 38 total units for development. Um, so these are our general uh, conditions of approval. So these are some things that I like to point out in to ensure that we have sustainable growth at this property. So the maximum number of units allowed per, for this parcel is 38 units. So that will be divided in between those two buildings. You can see they have amenities um, that are required per our code. Um, traffic impact assessment will be completed and the build-out and off-site improvements, such as the improvement uh, to Darnell Road, are included in those. Uh, we are aware that there is 15 feet of uh, pavement. It is 15 foot wide, and it has a 60 foot right-of-way according to the county. So, um, as, as always, because uh, we are balancing growth, uh, the rezoning of this property does not guarantee the availability of water and sewer. So as you've been hearing everything in the paper, it's uh, we are not 
we do not guarantee capacity. So um, number five, site plan review. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'll go back to three. So of 38 units, 10% of those units, so three, four will have to be at the 40% of AMI. So that would be your 40% of that number, um, the, the almost 70,000. So that allows for people who are making somewhere in the range of twenty-seven dollars to $35,000 a year, they would be able to um, qualify for this type of housing. Whereas the other 60 and 80% are the higher, $47,000 a year and so on up. Um, so site plan review, um, one of the things that we do at the city is we require you to go through site plan review, and this includes things like meeting our building standards, providing stormwater, um, stormwater resolutions that prevent, um, well, create uh, our water quality and quantity is controlled. Um, also looking at our streets, how they're built, our utilities, and landscaping. So uh, one additional uh, condition for this is a reversion clause. If this property is not um, bought by April 2025 for this purpose, then this property will revert back to commercial. Thank you, ma'am. At this time, under the public hearing, is there anyone else here to speak on this item? If you will please, in the very back, there you go, if you will state your name and address, please, ma'am. To the podium. Sure, come on up. Oh, wow. That would be good. Come join us. <laughs> I'm Sarah Chumley. I live on Darnell Road. There is a small piece of property between this development and me. And I'm anti. Simply because the water line is very old. It's a two inch line. And the road is basically, Darnell Road is basically a one lane road. And I don't think they're going to pave or repair Darnell Road from their entrance all the way to Philadelphia Road. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. At this time, are there any others here to speak on this side? Yes, sir. You'll stay yeah, here. I live at, my name's Tommy Chum, I live at 330 Darnell Road. You can't even get out in the road at Highway 53 now. You have to, of a morning, you have to wait till the red light at Wendy's stops traffic all the way back to Darnell Road and somebody has to let you out. And if you have 25 or 30 more, then where's that going to put the traffic? And it's the same way if you go around to uh, Philadelphia Road. And it's, like I said, it's a small road. If, if, if you pull up there and somebody has to turn in, you've got to back up or they can't get out of the road. It's just a, I mean, it's a, the traffic there is awful in the morning. Thanks, sir. Have anyone else present wishing to speak on this item? Yes, sir. Just state your name and address for the record, please. <coughs> Hi, my name is Josh Thomas, and I'm at 307 Burt's Laurel, Woodstock, Georgia. Um, I'm with uh, Piedmont Housing Group. I'm the owner. Um, so just to at least briefly break down who we are, we're uh, workforce housing developers. We build workforce housing and senior housing uh, at an affordable level across Georgia and South Carolina. We've done that since 2010. We've developed over 36 properties, uh, over 90% of which are in rural Georgia or South Carolina. Those are the only two states uh, that we work in outside of one small deal in Oklahoma. Um, our, our proposal is for 38 units of workforce housing, and these are going to be folks that um, would work at the nearby um, Home Depot, Kroger, or any other service restaurant type industries around town. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I think our proposal was between 50% of AMI and 60% of AMI. And, and then I understand the um, request for the 40% of area median income folks just to make sure 
some of the folks right now who, who, in addition to the missing middle that can't find housing, can't find housing. Our apartment communities are built, they, if you're looking at them from the outside or you live in one of them, you can't tell the difference between those and a market rate apartment community because that's the standards that we built to, the standards that we have to build to, um, that our investors require, and that the state requires. And so I, I, I get usually in, in municipalities there's some concern about whether it's a Section 8 housing, which is not. Unfortunately, we do work under a program called the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. I wish they would have called the Workforce Housing Program and they passed it in 1986 under Reagan, but they didn't. And so I, I, I understand the necessity to kind of explain what the program entails. We apply to the Georgia Department of Community Affairs for an allocation of tax credits. Uh, those tax credits then come to us and then we go out into the open market. Um, One minute, right, sir. Work with folks to bring in um, equity for those tax credits. And then instead of me going out there to a lender and asking for loan proceeds to finance it, we finance it with uh, tax credits, which allows us to keep rents low, but we don't have the debt burden on it. So we can provide market rate housing to folks who work in the workforce in the city of Jasper and maintain the level that's expected of any market rate house. Thank you, sir. Thanks. I can answer any questions you guys want, but I'm obviously sensitive to y'all's time. There are conditions on the uh, uh, approval. You understand and accept the conditions? I did. Okay. And then I, just one more quick thing. There are two of us here. The state will only fund one of us. So if there were 10 of us in here asking for tax credits and different developers, they, they wouldn't fund 10, they're only going to fund one of us. Just to kind of let you guys know the other side. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What is the height of your building? The height. So I'll be honest, in a public hearing, if your public comments towards us, if you guys would like to have those questions answered, um, council, are we willing to entertain a back and forth? I don't think we have plans on this to discuss that yet. I can Plans certainly haven't been answer. approved yet. Yeah. The, the height of the building is, is 35 feet. 35. At the top of the roof. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Joe Chum. I live on North Hill Road. Uh, I know you said it was not Section 8 housing, but you mentioned the income of around $27,000 or $35,000. Could anybody tell me what are the requirements for Section 8 housing in Pickens County for a two-person family? So in general, um, Section 8 housing is the government comes in and says, hey, you make $10,000, you're only going to pay a third of your income in rent, so therefore you can only pay $3,000 a year in rent. The program we utilize says, hey, if you take our tax credits, you have to agree to rent your property in your apartments to folks that make 60% or less or 80% or less, and there's a bunch of caveats in there of area median income, and you have to rent it at an affordable level, which is 35% of those numbers. Um, so in, in general, we still we run it like a normal apartment community where somebody has to pay me rent or they are evicted because I have to have their rent in order to pay debt in order to, to uh, pay the water bill, power bill, landscapers, and all that. that. So that's the drastic difference in this. Section 8 is a, is a, um, a subsidy of the tenant's rent. Uh, the tax credits that we utilize is just meant to lower our debt burden so that we can still run it um, as a normal apartment community, but at the same time charge affordable rents. Um, so rather than be a subsidy for someone not to pay rent or not have to pay as much rent, they still have to pay us, but we just agreed to rent it to them for less. So again, folks can make up to 80% of your area median income, which I hate to come in here and say we're basing it off Atlanta stuff because I know that's not, I don't want to hear that in Woodstock and I don't want y'all, I know y'all don't necessarily want to hear Atlanta stuff in Jasper. Um, but what it does allow us is to open it up to the missing middle. So folks that work at the local restaurant up to teachers. And, 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 and there's that broad spectrum, but no, one, no one's having to go to the federal government and say, hey, can you pay my rent for me? 
That's not how it Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. From what I just found on the government website, the Section 8 housing requirement for Gilmer, Gilmer County, which is smaller as far as population as Pickens County, is $33,000 for a two-person family. So, yeah. That's good. I'll leave it at that. All right. Do I have anyone else here to speak on this item? Yes, ma'am. Just down um, state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Angie Miller, uh, 275 Arbor Hills, North. Um, I'm a disabled veteran, 100% service connected. Most of my veterans that are service connected, um, with 100% service connected, make roughly what I make, 46,000. Most of us now have put 100,000 plus down on houses. We pay our bills. Bringing something like this in slaps me in the face. Slaps veterans that have worked their tails off to get where I'm at. I live in a wonderful community and bring in basically a ta it's, this is not a tax credit. I hear what you're saying, but this is government assisted into a community that is a well built, well organized. That is, this is past low income housing. This is not. $250,000, you, you, you haven't said anything about what did they qualify. Most people have worked their tails off to get good credit, have great jobs, pay their bills. Do they get in with, with zero or no credit? I've paid my bills since I was 18. I served my country. All of these things for somebody that may or may not keep a job that may or may not show up to work just because they don't want to work at $9.50 an hour job when the Pentagon laid off. I still went to work and work for McDonald's. So you're telling me that somebody that works at a low income job can come into this community <laughs> and slot right up to where these people back here who have stood up and said, there's no space for it. The infrastructure will not hold up. And you have not said not one time that you're going to come in and build up infrastructure, that you're not going to pave the road. I haven't heard one thing that says you're going to do the right thing to help out this community. One minute. So do you have a plan for infrastructure to embrace the two-inch pipe? Do you have anything in place that's going to help with traffic? Do you have anything that's going to tell me that it's not truly Government assisted housing. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mayor, can I address this? I, I, I hate yes, to sir. I hate to not address but and, and give these folks the, the I'm sorry, three minutes. Go ahead. All right. Um, so we, we have agreed to the conditions to improve Darnell Road um, and the existing water and sewer infrastructure to tie back in the city's facility. Additionally, I, I certainly understand the concern about it being government housing. Um, I, I've dealt with it on many occasions, and I understand it personally myself. All I can do is lay out that there's two 800 pound gorillas in the room, and one of them with, of which is the state government, the other of which is the investor who's going to invest upwards of $13 million in this to make sure I do it correctly within the cities requirements and within the state's requirements and with the requirements that they have. I can 100% guarantee that, that I've built over 36 of these properties and I stand behind all of them. Um, but I, I, I certainly don't discount the citizens' concern about infrastructure. I will say regarding our residents, they all have to pass a background check, they all have to pass a credit check because I'm running a business and I need uh, our residents to, pay, to, to be able to pay their rent. <coughs> Um, or else I can't operate my property and pay the debt service and, and pay my bills and pay my employees. Uh, on top of that, we, we, we have a third party property management company that manages 10,000 units that will be managing this on a day to day basis that report directly to us. Um, and again, I live right down the road here and I would probably live next door to this property um, any day of the week. Thank you, sir. Do we have anyone else here wishing to speak on this item? 
Gentlemen, sit down first, and I'll get you, sir. Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Roy Williams, 43 Darnell Road. Thank you, sir. And, uh, I'll bet they're going to do this and get right near the door. You'd be against it. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. You'll state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Jackie McClure, 215 Darnell Road. I agree with all these people. The road, the community, you can paint it, you can call it anything you want to, but it's still low income housing. Either way you look at it. You can call it affordable housing. You can say it's not good. If you're getting tax credit, it's government funded. It has something to do with the government. The road is a safety issue. It's we it's a racetrack over there now. Sarah's had wrecks in her front yard. I've had cars up in my front yard. And we get all this traffic from Hobson Creek and all the other places that are being built on Philadelphia Road. And the next question is, where y'all going to get the water from? <laughs> you've got Publix coming in, you've got Chick-fil-A, you've got all these other things. One, but just a few years ago, we were going to have to alternate before we could wash our cars. We have no infrastructure. Y'all are putting the car before the horse. And I understand what you're trying to do, but you're making money off of it. You're destroying our property values by putting a low-income housing. And that's what it is. You can call it whatever you want, but it's low-income housing. Period. Thank you, sir. I certainly appreciate the, the comments. I would just say that, you know, the, the Chick-fil-A's of the world, the Publix of the world, the Home Depot's of the world, the folks who work there do have to have somewhere to live. I'm just speaking from, from, from my side and from other municipalities that I work in, other rural municipalities that are in growth corridors. Um, the folks who work in your in your town, you'd rather them spend your money in your town than somewhere else. But that's just that's what we say. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. If you'll state your name and address for the record. We're Stacy McClure. I live at 215 Darnell Road. I understand what you're trying to do. I appreciate it. But at the same time, where are you getting your numbers? Where are the statistics that show that that is necessary and needed on that road? Have you called the other apartments around the area, see what their wait list is, how long they've been on that wait list? I mean, where, where do you get the numbers to support this on that road? Thank you, ma'am. I guess in response to that, I would say not necessarily on this particular road, but in general in the area, we've had a market analysis done, and I could build, right now we're proposing 38 units, I could build 308 units, or 380 units, and I wouldn't have a concern about leasing it up in 90 days. Do I have, yes ma'am? Can I make one more comment? You did have a minute left. Um, so I had a message that come through to me this past week, I'm in ministry, I had a young lady that's got four children. She didn't have a didn't, didn't have money to pay her rent this past week. So you told me you could rent four hundred more. How many times do these people lay on their rents? People don't have money right now, but you can rent all these apartments. Now, are they coming from here? Yes. Thirty cents. But and, and part of that, the reasoning behind that is our rents aren't as high as as what uh, as what's being charged right now. So when I when I say yes, um, I actually know that it's 100 percent sure that right now we have a shortage of affordable housing here in Jasper, across the state, everywhere else. But our rent structure of um, Current proposed rent structure, I'm sorry, let me get it back to my right page. Where I'm going anywhere between 550 up to 950 doesn't exist in the city. Especially to the extent of which I'm providing, I would be providing it at a high level of service and a high level of property. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I have another question. Says you can rent more more units. Okay, there's an acre, almost an acre and a half of land that an honorable council member owns right in front of that. When you fill those up, where's the next building going to go? Is it going to continue? So, what kind of conflict are we going to get into 
the same people that still in you this property owns the property across the road. So how many more? Are you gonna put all 400 in there on us? I, I, you know, I mean, no, it, it's a fair well, when does the growth stop? Yeah, it's a fair. And, and the, another question is, is if you can rent 38, but where's all these people living now? They're, they're, they're living in, in substandard housing or they're living out of town and driving up And driving up here to, work. to make these, they're telling me that they're driving from Atlanta or Woodstock up here to come up here and make our lower median income. It's what y'all survey is saying. So they're driving up here to come to work. And why every day do you see in the paper where people, job, we're hiring, we're hiring. Can't find nobody to work. Have you been to any restaurants? You've been to any businesses around here? Most people, you can't get weighed on because they don't have any. The steakhouse right over here closed. Can't get nobody to work. No, and I, I, so so that. That. I guess my, my, my response to that would be in general that they can't get folks to work because it, it's hard for folks to afford to live up here to go to work. All right, and then take the time. I'm going to cut you off. Do you have any other citizens? Yes, ma'am. I want to say that Darnell Road is a beautiful little road. The farm on either side, the hay fields, uh, the homes are well kept. The grass is always mowed. We're a friendly little road. We know everybody and take care of everybody. And please don't let this be destroyed for the sake of 38 low income apartments. Thank you. Do I have anyone else wish to speak on this item that has not previously spoken? All right. Thank you all very much. I will move on under public hearing to item number two. Item number two is a request to rezone. I'm going to turn it over to Mary Burgess. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, yes, residents. This is item number two. Go ahead, Ms. Uh, thank you. This is item number two on the agenda. This is a request to rezone 25.65 acres along Philadelphia Road from RF to MFR multifamily residential. So the existing conditions is currently this lot is vacant. Um, there are utilities in the area and it has just shy of 1,200 linear feet along Philadelphia Road. As you can see, it's the one with the big red star on it. So um, across the way is uh, city zone residential ag agriculture. Right now that has, is farmland. Uh, to the west, we have what is zoned commercial along our 515 corridor. And it has a residential, a vacant residential unit on it now. Uh, we do have uh, to the east is what is known as Rolling Meadows, which is the new uh, townhome development that is going in on Philadelphia. Uh, just spoke getting ready to uh, start building. And then to the south, we have a county, um, county road uh, zone highway business mobile home park. So similar to what we were just talking about, this is another DCA, Department of Community Affairs uh, project. They are two going after the low income tax incentive housing project. So this will be done in two phases with 60 units in three buildings. Again, well, with the median incomes that they're looking at, uh, this area is considered the North Georgia Commercial Corridor. And as our comprehensive plan says, and our future development map, as you see that black arrow is right outside the red, which is how that commercial corridor does develop in the same pattern. So you have commercial, multifamily, attached single family, and single family and so forth. So that's usually how you want to develop your rings of development on uh, from commercial outward. 
So again, this is going to be um, for affordable workforce housing opportunities. So this one, we get a little more information about what the rents are and how they will be handling the income. So if you look at some of those, so one bedroom, one bath, 700 square feet. Um, so the market rate would be $1,100. Whereas you have the 60% of AMA would be um, 931 and so on. So it goes down per the type. So you have a number of units that will be that type. And then um, what is required and what is the rent on those. So these are kind of a couple of the examples that the applicant has done. There's one in Ball Ground, uh, known as Addington Ridge. Uh, there's another one in Centerville. Um, again, they are just, uh, you know, apartment complexes. So the, this one <coughs> is, um, as you can see, it has the challenge of that 300 foot uh, utility easement that goes right down the property. And it's, a, I believe it's a power easement and there's gas in there as well. And so um, you do have to develop around that. You can't have any structures in it, uh, but you can use it for parking and other alternatives. So this is going to be a two-phase project, if approved, uh, with a total of 120 units. Um, the allowable number of units um, that would be with this uh, development would be 205 units. However, one of the conditions of approval is to limit it to 120 units and not the 205. So if this project was not to be awarded by DCA, anyone who wants to build out the project would have to come back to council in order to get additional units. So um, as with the other project, a traffic impact assessment will need to be done, and this will include all of the future uh, traffic to be developed when uh, Rolling Meadows, the uh, subdivision to the east, is fully built out. So um, at our traffic impact assessments, Tell us what kind, what we need to develop in order for we, us to create a safe travel for all the residents. So this may not have been done in the past, but this is the direction we are moving in to make sure that we do have safe travel. And I apologize for not explaining that a little thoroughly in the previous one. Um, again, I am asking for that 10% of these units, or 12 of them, be at that 40% of AMI. Um, you know, when I got out of grad school, uh, I, I was in affordable housing. As a planner, I was making $32,000 a year. So I can, uh, I can totally attest that these are great developments and I support affordable housing because I wouldn't have been able to do my job because that was on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So, um, <clears throat> so again, um, Grant, um, we talked about water and sewer. Number four on this is that we do not guarantee water and sewer. We do not guarantee you capacity. And by accepting these conditions of approval, you understand that. So we're not going to, um, we are approving things and giving people the water and sewer. If we don't have it, it will be delayed until we can get it. Or it, it may not even work at all. And lastly, our condition number five. So these are all the, Conditions, all these conditions are based off of our uh, current zoning. So you have to comply with zoning, first and foremost, which includes your stormwater, your traffic, your lot, lot layout. Everything has to comply um, with our current zoning regulation. Um, that also includes buildings, all the building regulations, environment. <coughs> so we have to make sure we get that water quality. Um, reviewed by our engineering crew, and then we have all the other things like streets, curbs, sidewalks, utilities, and vegetation. That's all I have. Yep, that's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. In the audience, do I have any others here this evening to speak on this item? Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Bill Johnson. I live at 76 Arbor Hills Place. I've uh, been a resident up here since 2001 this time. I uh, was here the first time back when Harley Camper was the sheriff. 
So I've been around this, this place since before the interstate was here. Well, interstate. Um, the biggest problem I'm having with all of this that's going on and is going after the, the one big grill in the room is Philadelphia Road along the Darnell Road. The traffic already has doubled or more from what it was six years ago. Uh, the traffic lights are not timed enough just to even get turned out without two revolutions. It's going to get worse as this Rolling Meadows goes. It's already approved, I get it. But on the other side of the road on Philadelphia, we've got a hundred house subdivision victim to go in. There's land next to our business on the other end of that road that has been entertaining in a subdivision. I don't know how far that's got, but now we've got Darnell coming in there. So we've got We've got the equivalent of housing that's, that's going to bring a thousand cars or more into that road in the next several years. There's no way that's going to have to be widened out with turn lanes, XL, D cell. Uh, there's just a lot to it. And you know, you got infrastructure too, but my biggest thing is the roads in this area cannot handle that right now. And I think it's too much development, too fast in one area. I'm not against the housing. I know people got to have places to live. I just think we need to pump the brakes on this a little bit. We've got enough going on as it is. Thank you, sir. Do you have any others here this evening to speak on this item? Uh, yes, sir. Go state your name and address for the record. Yeah, uh, Matt Monroe. Um, I'm with Ray Ventures Group, and we're representing this property. Our uh, company address is uh, 2964 Peachtree Road, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, just to address that comment real quick, you know, we. I don't think it's captured in this condition, but we are uh, capturing on the site plan, which is contemplating a diesel lane, um, turn lane for this property to help with the speed and the deceleration to make a right turn uh, in, into this development once completed. Um, and of course, you know, we fully understand uh, full traffic impact analysis would need to be completed um, on, on the development for, before development. But just to kind of introduce our company a little bit, very similar to what Mr. Thomason said, um, you know, we are vying for the, the Georgia Department of Community Affairs tax credits. Uh, our company's been in business since 2007. Um, our owner has been developing workforce housing since 1990. We own 2,700 units uh, across Georgia. We also work in other states. We, we own, we develop, and we operate. All these properties, uh, we, we have properties I think we've owned since 1990, 1994, mid-90s, uh, that we've renovated over the years to bring them back to code and continue owning them. Um, we have a, a professional property manager that are on site every day. Uh, we, we, as Mr. Thompson mentioned, we very much do run this like any other market rate property. We're in control of who comes in, running rent checks, background checks, evictions, uh, full uh, landscape management, full property management and maintenance. Um, and there are a few brief photos, but I just want to mention a couple of properties that are very similar. We did one in uh, Ball Ground back in uh, 2021, um, Abington Ridge, and we've done quite a few at, at that size, and that's kind of, yeah, the design and the scale we contemplate for this two three-story splits, um, balcony apartments, good good amenities including playground, community centers, gym, um, computer center, community room, laundry room, um, fully landscaped, community gardens, uh, but I'll stop there and if there's any questions, we're, we're happy to answer. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Could I speak again? Absolutely. It's a different um, item. Okay. Um, on this particular item right here, uh, I live at Harbor Hills, um, which is right down from this particular. But um, those two properties, at, uh, Philadelphia Road and Raleigh Meadows, if those two are brought into play, we're looking at 780 cars minimum if each house has two cars. That's 780 vehicles added to that short lane of the highway in between 515 and basically Main Street, uh, which I believe is uh, Talking Rock Road. Um, 
But you're talking about bringing that many cars. Uh, that's 300, I believe it's 390 units, I think, the 120, and then uh, the other has 270, so it's uh, basically 390 units. So if you, even if you drop it down to one car, uh, which is not usually how it works, but just the cars alone, up and down the traffic, and I hear what you're saying, sir, about you're going to do a, a slow lane and all that. You would have to have a, a turning lane, a passing lane, basically. Um, but it always goes back to traffic and infrastructure. That much added to just that short area of road. That's a lot of water flow. That's a lot of traffic going in and out. And I was talking to uh, Brandon the other day about, has anybody seen what looks like there's possibly a sinkhole that's trying to open up on Philadelphia where it looks like the dump trucks have been going back and forth. Just on Philadelphia. Right now that road looks like it could possibly use um, a new paving. We can't handle any more cars on our road right now. I'd hate to see what another almost a thousand like Bill said on that road. I, I appreciate Atlanta. I love going down there to eat. But Jasper could I just make a quick yes, distinction sir. that it, we are contemplating two phases right now we're, we're putting in for 60 uh, units to begin with um, the second phase would be if that's successful in, in a future year but yes we, we wanted to be upfront that it is you know, if, if we're successful with the first phase, we would hope to add a second. Um, and just the unit types, one bedroom, one bath would be 21 of the 60 units to begin with. Two bedroom, two bath would be 33, and then the three bedroom, two bath would be six units. Just to kind of break out, you know, the, the number of bedrooms and, and potential uh, cars and stuff like that. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other two of the we should speak on this item? <coughs> Okay, no further discussion, we'll move on to item number three under public hearing. Request for modification to an ordinance. Mr. Mayor Burgess, I have you again. Okay. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, Council, Residents. This is item number three to discuss a request to modify ordinance number 2021-25 known as Jasper Village and also Haley Village as it turned uh, midway between approval uh, by removing 6.69 acres of parcel 030B061001 and modify other previously approved conditions. So this uh, this development was approved in 2021 for 100 single-family homes, 99 townhomes, <coughs> those are the darker shader ones to the, to the north and to the west of the property, on the property, 11.2 acres of commercial along Philadelphia and also the 515 up towards the top. Uh, and they were to have three access points, one off Appalachian Court, and two off of Philadelphia, lining up with the existing uh, H. Mullins and Pinnacle. So this was previously approved. So right now, as a, the current draft plan is to have 102 single family homes, 16 acres of commercial, with two access points. So it's still removing that parcel. So if you go back to this, all that, those gray shaded area and Appalachia Court entrance um, are gone. So no more townhomes and um, just the single family homes at this point. So the average lots uh, over there are the 50 by 100. That's in the right corner. So this is what the draft plan looks like right now for 102 homes. So all of these homes have to be 50 by 100 lots and they have to meet the stormwater requirements. And as you see, all those squiggly lines to the left and around it all, that's the creek. And 
and um, most of it, the reduction is due to the fact that it's too expensive to cut across the creek with water, sewer, and then uh, uh, vehicles as well. So um, that being said, the modification is needed per our regulations. Anytime you change something about a planned unit development, you have to come back and get the okay from the council. So this is what the proposal um, will look like when built out. Uh, these are the latest plans that the developer has provided. As you see right in the middle there, that's the 100 or 102 single family homes. And then you have the commercial <coughs> along 515 and along Philadelphia. And so this is another um, drawing that they have done up as uh, for the commercial and the residential combined. <coughs> So um, again, this, this project has been issued a land disturbance permit, um, and they had to uh, give us a bond to begin logging um, so that we can ensure that moving forward that this, this isn't somebody who's going to clear the property and then say, ready for development, and then we know what happens with that. It sits with no trees. If that were to happen, cash in the bond, and then I'll plant all new trees. So, and I obviously know that you can't get the growth in the years back, but it's a, something that we'll, we're trying to work on here. So again, uh, you can't really see it by this drawing, but the intersection right there, that's um, uh, H. Mullins and the new road, and then further down to the far right of that picture is the intersection uh, at 515. As you can see, kind of, there are D cell, new D cell lanes, A cell lanes, turning lanes, all being added to that area as part of their development and build out. Um, they will have to basically redesign the road and, and to accommodate this. So, um, when we're talking about traffic impact statements, this is what our engineer told them they had to do for this project to move forward. So uh, again, uh, for the recommendation, the modification is to approve by removing the original parcel, 6.69 acres, because uh, it was not purchased by the applicant and the person who owns the land uh, has a PUD designation, which you can't do anything with. And so to revert it back to the R1, the low density single family residential that it originally was, uh, future commercial development must adhere to all current at the time of the site plan submittal zoning ordinance. So, so that ensures that we have the most up-to-date relevant uh, site plan and zoning correspondence. So if we go on to improve our zoning code more in the future, the commercial will have to adhere to that. And then the existing conditions uh, that do not affect the, uh, the, uh, uh, the development as is can remain. Thank you. Item number three, do I have any others here this evening wishing to speak on this item? Yes, sir. If you'll state your name and address for the record, please. Ken Mapp, I'm with the King of Kings Church at the north part of this property. Yes, sir. Do I understand now that the, the part on Appalachian Circle is the six acres that's been deleted? So you're going to have two entrances to this. Where are your two entrances going to be? Because one was supposed to be at the Appalachian Circle next to our property. This pointer thing doesn't really work. It's going to go up the point. <laughs> so this right here is H. Mullins. So here's your one entrance. And then here's the other one lined up with the pinnacle entrance down here. Okay, so, so there it's you not go. coming off Appalachian Circle. No, this is the, where, all, where you have that creek back there. Yeah. That's where they're stopping. So they're not going to that six acres up there yeah. where all the townhomes were going to be. Uh, that works because the right of way would delete where they had planned to have that original. Thank you. Yes, sir. Do you have any others here this evening wishing to speak on this? Yes, sir. If you'll state your name and address for the record. Yes, uh, Jerry Phillips, uh, 6735 Cadence Boulevard, and represent the uh, uh, the ownership from the, the the master developer along this. Uh, and then that's actually you brought up a good point. When we started getting into the engineering and <clears throat> looking at uh, the, the site, uh, the impact, uh, the to do the stream crossing, the elevation would have been very high and it just would have destroyed a significant portion of the creek. And then also having that access point go through the church parking lot was less than desirable. And then one of the things really we're asking is something you don't really normally hear is we're looking to reduce the residential. I mean, we're, we're, we're cutting it in half, we're getting rid of all the townhomes because something else 
uh, just as we're going through the development process, I mean, we got 80 pounds across the street. I got 270 right up the road. It's 350. You don't need another 100 townhomes. So we're taking the townhomes <coughs> off. Uh, and also, we had the townhomes up on the highway, which is not really where you want to have the townhomes. So we're, we're, we're just ditching all the townhomes. And because we're doing that, uh, it's given us more room for the single family. So that the 50 by 100 watt was uh, the minimum on the PUD. That's obviously 5,000 square feet. The average lot size is uh, 6,200 square feet. So we got about a 20% increase on the lot size. We have more open space. We have like seven acres of open space now because we have a little bit more room. And the other thing we did is if you look at the original site plan that was approved, it's just all straight rows. It looks like, the, and, and we heard this when we were going through the original zoning, the, uh, the Worley Preserve, where all the homes are just straight. So we we went back and had the engineer just work with the, the natural topography. So there's not, there's not a straight uh, road in the development. The commercial is about the same um, in, in terms of what's under the LEP. Obviously, it's increasing because we've got a little bit of uh, kind of a wedge up there between the highway and the stream that's it's got its own something, and it's really perfect for uh, for. for, for, for for future commercial. Um, and we do have a lot of interest to, to do a hotel there. And when we did the traffic study, it actually uh, included a, a, a hotel uh, as part of the, the impact. So that's that's kind of basically where we are. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Any other so have one more question? For yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, on the water lines, you're, you're Gonna, when, I, when I built that church, I was going to have to pull water from way south and all the way through. And they only have a two-inch line going all through these houses that come up that creek and past us. And they run out of water at times. Are you planning to bring water up back and through that? And if it's that goes, we probably want to hook into it also. Uh, I don't. That's really good. as attractive as if you're going back far enough there, you'd be right behind us and those people back there would probably, the city would probably want to run all water line back through there because they were looking for a way to do that. Just yeah, as a suggestion. Sure you were planning for future. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any others here wishing to speak on this item? This yes, sir. As well as as you are, if you'll state your name and address, please, sir. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Larry Wilson. Uh, my address is 261 Whispering Pebbles Trail. Uh, and I live in this area. Uh, I got one concern. If you would take one of those and pass them there, please. Uh, one concern that I have is the, the entrance to the residential area. Uh, does not show the existing townhouse development, the entrance across the street. The sketch I passed around, I went out there and looked at it. Uh, there's a couple of things on his surveyor, the survey, which is power poles. And I went out and measured and that existing townhouse driveway is 16 feet from that road. When you when I sketched it on here, as you can see, the red going east and west is Philadelphia. The one to the south is the existing road. The one to the north is the proposed road. And the two center lines do not line up. That's a traffic problem. It will cause traffic problems in the future. There's also a center line on there that I drew, which connects the two center lines and with a minor change to his engineering drawings he can realign that road and make a, a, a four-way intersection there uh, and affect basically one lot. may not even affect that one when, when i get to redesigning it but that's my only concern with it. and also the, the proposed road does not enter at a 90 degree angle as currently laid out and they're about to start grading out there, or well soon, I guess. But 
a simple realignment of that road will correct that problem. It's going to be a problem there anyway with the traffic, but the way it's designed or laid out right now, it will cause much more of a, a greater problem to through traffic. And right now, coming out of Hobson Creek along, Hobson Road along, that area generates uh, about a thousand to twelve hundred trips a day. Most of them come right through this intersection. And that doesn't count what they're going to generate, what's generated across the street, and what's back out Philadelphia Road. So you're looking at anywhere from 1,500 to three to 3,000 trips a day when both properties are developed. So you're going to have some problems there. If that, uh, and it would be uh, a lot greater if that design is not changed. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you have anyone else in the audience wishing to speak on this item this evening? Mr. Mayor, may I have some comments? Yes, sir. <clears throat> it's always dangerous when I kind of take this position, but sitting up uh, here listening to people talk about what could or could not uh, potentially happen to their community. Um, Sometimes some things are said out of ignorance and sometimes there are other reasons for not getting the facts straight. And, and, and my comments are to try to educate um, the public, which I think is one of my duties as a council member. Um, first of all, we, we fully understand the issues that we have inherited as in the Lake Star infrastructure and our lack of natural resources. And we have invested taxpayer and other dollars in assessing that and we have uh, done that with master planning over infrastructures we've engaged engineers to make sure that we don't fall into that hole again and that we get professional evaluations on any of these um, developments that we bring before you and, and let you speak on um, we have a master plan and we're working on a capital improvement plan for 40 years. So we're looking at how we're going to spend taxpayer dollars for 40 years from now so that we will not get into the situation that we find ourselves now. We have invested in making sure that we assess the traffic and certainly the roads have been under maintained, poorly designed over the years and we're doing everything in our power to make sure that that doesn't happen again. One other comment that I just want to make sure that you all understand is that every piece of property for all intents and purposes in this city and in this county, there's a particular use by right. That individual has a way, they are legally entitled to use their property the way they see fit as long as they meet the laws. And so we don't go out and solicit people to bring rezonings to us. They come to us and by law we have to entertain them. So these, these are tough decisions and we know that they are, but, but your council, um, we're, we're not crooks, we're not, we don't get our pockets lined. I, I didn't make comment on one of the things tonight because it, there is a con potential conflict with a piece of property I own. So, I'm, so I'll be recusing myself from one of these decisions tonight. But take, talk to any of us, talk to all of us. We're trying to make really, really tough decisions that are really hard to make. This particular zoning right here, since this came to us, it was originally a, a 300 homes were proposed on this piece of property. There was a use by right for far fewer than that. Since that came to us as a council, we've changed our zoning laws twice to make the density less dense and, and the commercial value increased and, and 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 us holding the line on this PUD that didn't go down the way we originally approved it we're actually going to be decreasing the, 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 dens uh, the density and increasing the commercial and that's based on decisions we made in 2021 and, and since then so we'll always take it to heart we, we love having y'all here we don't mind we don't, we don't, you don't need to be embarrassed to come we, we like positive and negative input 
and appreciate your attention. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Have anyone else here wishing to speak on this item this evening? No other discussion. We will move on to item number four under public hearing. Item number four is a request to modify zoning ordinance. Mary Burks. So before you, you have uh, some modifications that we are recommending to update our zoning code to clarify some things that may uh, need to be clarified or to be more direct in how they are found in our zoning code. Uh, as Dr. Proctor alluded to, we did update our code uh, June 5th, 2023, and these are just other additional items to add to the strength of the code. So um, I'm not going to go through all of these. I can give you the, the, the broad strokes. So Article 1 um, has to deal with a land disturbance permit. So this outlines the um, policy that we currently have, and now it will be part of our actual zoning code, where you do not get a land disturbance permit until you have an approved site plan. So um, as I stated before, you won't see people just mass grading 50 acres and putting a sign up that says ready for development. So you will not get a land disturbance permit. And you need, in the city of Jasper, you need a land disturbance permit for 0.10 and up of acre dis of disturbance. So um, <clears throat> we are keeping a close eye on that because we are very much aware of our stormwater issues. That rolls into the second one, which deals with um, what is required to get a site plan review. So number 13 is stormwater management plan. And this is just outlining that this plan shall comply with the current Georgia Stormwater Management Manual, GSMN, uh, for quality and quantity. So to make it simplified, it says whatever, you, whatever leaves your property now for water has to be the same amount and the same quality when you're done developing that. So your, your pre and post have to be the same number. So they have to mitigate all that stormwater on site so it doesn't get into our roads and doesn't get into our streets. Um, one other thing to add to that is stormwater detention and retention shall be on the property being developed. So no more going into a private property detention because if they're public roads and we have our public system going into private property, there it becomes a conflict. So we're doing away with that altogether. So next is parking and access. So that has to do with non-residential uses and that's to ensure the safety of our residents who are out on a commercial lot and you're trying to access different um, outdoor stored materials, let's say windows, doors, sheds, things that are out on a uh, lot. This is to ensure that you have a safe travel that they have to be paved in order to prevent you having any accidents and also you can't have dirt and you can't have um, stone. Gravel and loose stone are already prohibited by our regulation. Uh, the third one is to uh, add, uh, to clarify um, one of the items on our use table. And <clears throat> currently we have liquor and beer package set of uh, sales, so base, your basic package store. So we're clarifying this just to say liquor, beer, and wine package, and where they're allowed to be, uh, where you're allowed to have those types of stores. Um, the last, <clears throat> the next one is for um, outdoor lighting. This is just another thing that has come up with the changing of times and uh, different availability of products. So wood light poles are prohibited in all districts. So you won't be able to utilize a telephone pole and put a light on. It has to be decorative. It has to basically be attractive for that development. <coughs> Let's see. Um, so landscaping, this is uh, something new. So sidewalks are required in all residential development and commercial development, at least on the length of your frontage on the property and within the subdivisions like you just saw. So this is payment in lieu of sidewalk construction. Uh, we realize there, there are some areas that will not be able to have sidewalks because of the steep slope on the side of the road 
or it's dangerous, or future construction. So what this lays out is <coughs> that the applicant will, will have to basically say the reason why they cannot provide that sidewalk, and then they have to pay um, in a payment in lieu of sidewalk. So the, pay, the sidewalk has to be brought to the city specs, so four foot wide, the sub base, um, ADA ramps, all of that is priced out, and then we add a 20% contingency on top of that, and the person has to provide the funds, and that goes into our sidewalk fund, which will be maintained by our street department and used for future engineering and maintenance for existing uh, sidewalks in the area. I think that's all I have. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Do I have anyone here wishing to speak on item number four this evening? Being no other comment, we will move on to item number five, which is listed as number two from the unfinished business, how Annex 490 Libby Lane into the city. Ms. Burks. This is my favorite item of the evening. I'm asking for a continuance to <laughs> June 3rd. Don't have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have anyone here this evening wishing to speak on this item? Anything further, Ms. Burton? Not at this time, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, being no further comment, ladies and gentlemen, this time I will end the public hearing. <coughs> Moving on to the next agenda item, Council, you do have a consent agenda before you. I yield the floor. Make a motion. Will we approve consent agenda? I have a motion to have a second. Second, sir. No. Motion a second. Any discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed, same. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. Unfinished business. Item number one. Chemical holdings. Request to be continued until 6-3-2024. Ms. Burgess. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have been working diligently. We have uh, received uh, some new plans, some stormwater plans, and some hy uh, hydro plans. So uh, we are moving forward to coming into compliance and hopefully uh, finishing this project. So continuance to uh, June 3rd. Yield full for a motion. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both same. Thank you, Council. Unfinished business item number two. I believe you are looking for a continuation on that one also. <coughs> so we did that one. We did that under the public hearing. It's actually not business yet. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. Council, moving on to new business. Uh, I will declare publicly there's a conflict with myself and item number three. I will not be part of the discussion and or the vote. Mayor Pro Tem will lead discussion and vote on that item. Item number one, pending of Sergeant Jimmy Long with the Jasper Police Department. Chief Matt Dawkins, come forward, please, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A little higher note, so it's a little different. Uh, as y'all know, for the past two years, we have done some of the first things, like swearing in and stuff like that. So tonight, uh, this evening, we would like to recognize Jimmy Long for being promoted from patrolman to the rank of sergeant. Jimmy Long has been with the Jasper Police Department for four years and in the office for 12. Um, he has shown his ability to combine purpose, persistence, and passion, which are three qualities of a good leader, and he has met all the requirements from the Jasper Police Department to be a sergeant. So at this time, I would like to ask his wife, Leslie, to come up and see the Chief Davis.
Professor. Congratulations. Issues and I don't 
to have to deal with those same issues because it's been a nightmare. And this came through the Public Safety Committee, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Right. Brought before council. <laughs> council, I'd entertain a motion to uh, agree uh, or disagree with the approval of municipal court software with I 3 Verticals LLC. Make a motion we purchase the. Uh, well, and, and it's just you guys want to do it from the committee side? Yeah, yeah, we can. Oh. So uh, make a motion to move forward changing over the uh, I 3 Vertical CGT software system. Mr. Hannon, I appreciate that. I'll need a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same side. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, in addition uh, to preserve the protection of our potential conflict, I need a motion uh, to for myself to execute the agreement rather than Asking Mayor Raffle to do that. So I need a motion to. So moved. Right. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say aye. Motion passes. Thank you all. I'd like to respect Mayor Raffle. Thank you, sir. And this is item number four consideration approval of request to rezone Mary Burgess. So the first one for consideration for approval is 100 Darnell uh, Road. That is 4.73 acres to be rezoned, or what we say down zone, from C2 to multifamily residential with the um, conditions laid out here. Thank you, ma'am. Council, this time yield the floor for a motion. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, despite having no relationship with the owner of this property i do have an adjacent piece of property and i'll be recusing myself from any discussion about it yes sir council at this time we yield the floor for a motion for discussion <clears throat> i make a motion we approve uh the uh, rezoning of uh, darnell road property I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Council discussion. Uh, this meets a comprehensive plan. It uh, does not guarantee water and sewer, uh, and does require a uh, impact study for traffic. Uh, I think with those protections, that uh, and and. The plans themselves have not been presented yet or, or approved. Uh, but when, when with the considerations that uh, they have agreed to, uh, I'm, I think it's uh, time to move on with the uh, next steps. Any further discussion, Council? Yeah, what kind of time frame are we doing? Are we aware of that, of uh, when this will be built? I'll let Ms. Burgess speak on this. This is simply for the reason. So uh, this would not because of the DCA requirement. So the deadline for the application is May 17th, and then they usually get approval anywhere from August to November. And then if you go into the planning phase and soup to nuts, probably 18 months before they get a shovel on the ground after that. Any further discussion, Council? Mayor, uh, I do want to note that some conditions got added, I think, at the planning uh, commission stage. So we're going to have to tweak the written ordinance if the motion passes to reflect those additional conditions. More conditions, yes, sir. We have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Aye. Thank you, Council. Motion passes. Um, Mayor, I yes, sir. only two voted 
in favor, and I think under our charter takes the affirmative vote of three in order to pass. With the refusal of one, do you need my vote? Um, I think under the charter, yes, you only get the vote in the event of a tie. I, uh, can I make a motion we table uh, until we have full council in uh, attendance? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Siphon, we do have a motion second on the floor that's been voted on. Um, we're clear under Robert's rules in order to move on to a new motion. If it's illegal, or if it's not permitted. Well, I think whoever made the original motion probably has to do a motion to withdraw that motion. Make a motion or we withdraw. I have a motion to withdraw the original motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to withdraw. Any discussion? All in favor to withdraw? Aye. Uh, Opposed, say. Thank you, Council. Make a motion to table this uh, vote until we have uh, full council representation. I have a motion to table. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Opposed, say. Thank you, Council. This item has been taken. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. Item number five, consideration approval. Mary Burgess. Again, this is um, from the public hearing that we just had. This is Philadelphia Road. Um, two phases, 60 units per phase. Um, standard uh, conditions of approval, which do include the traffic impact and the no guarantee of infrastructure, such as water and sewer, and then applicable site plan review, uh, zoning, applicability, regulations, all of that. So this is also a DCA project. Thank you, ma'am. Council, this time we give the floor for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to table it to the Council. I have a motion to accept. Motion to table, Council. Do I have a second? I'll draw my motion. Motion to fail. Council, at this time, entertain a motion for the floor for consideration, denial, or tabling of this item. I'd like to make a motion to deny request. Have a motion to deny. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and second to deny. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Sopkin, we have a tie on council. Does that require by charter or vote of the mayor? Mm -hmm. He does. I hereby vote in order to deny said request. Let it be known for the record. Two for, two against. I break a tie with a vote to deny. Thank you, Council. Item number six, consideration of approval of request for modification. Mary Burns. Before you have a request to modify Ordinance 2021-25 um, to amend, uh, to remove uh, 6.69 acres uh, and also to ensure that the commercial development meets the most current zoning and then all other conditions shall remain. Thank you, ma'am. Council, this time yield the floor for a motion. I'll make a motion to table this, Mr. Mayor. I have a motion to table. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Council? I'd like to uh, state that, uh, for the record, that there's some of the ordinances, ordinance changes that were suggested uh, haven't been thoroughly uh, assessed at this time. So I'd like to table that, table this until that can be done. Any further discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed, uh, same. Thank you, Council. Motion to table passes. 
Item number seven, consideration approval of modifying zoning ordinance. Mayor Burgess. So I have some text amendments here that have been discussed um, previously in our public hearing and also with um, and work session and committee. Uh, as have been provided to you before, the changes are in red, uh, the new language is in red, and the strike through is the removal of the um, information that's out of touch. Council, you have a floor for a motion. Make a motion that um, uh, modification to uh, zoning ordinance be approved. I second that. Motion and a second. Council, any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Uh, All opposed? Thank you, Council. Item number eight, consideration approval of GFA drinking water state revolving law. Ms. Kim Goldner. Mary, I think you get to catch a breath. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so you'll recall in March I came before y'all with a, a GFA loan agreement for clean water, which ironically is sanitary sewer. A couple of projects that uh, GMC, our consultants, have recommended that we go ahead and tackle initially. Those are critically prioritized projects. Tonight, I bring before you two drinking water projects that are critically prioritized and that we have been approved for GFA funding for as well. Uh, the first project is improvements to our water treatment plant over on Wood Lane. This project is multifaceted. There are lots of moving parts and lots of things that will be improved with this project, but it includes upgrades to the filtration system, concrete restoration throughout the plant, control valve replacement and automation. There will be significant electrical upgrades that are done, upgrades to the chemical containment and storage areas, and replacement of the turbidimeters the lighting, and then security improvements. Um, security as in security cameras, new gates, things like that. All items that EPD has noted that we need to pursue during our most recent sanitary survey. So that is the first project. That has been estimated at $2 million. The second project is similar to what we had on the clean, uh, clean water side, our sanitary sewer programs, and that is rehab of the distribution system. And so again, multifaceted project, there will be multiple things going on. That is going to be um, isolation valves to allow us to, when we have an issue, narrow down the area that we are actually working in without having to put blocks and blocks of people out of water. Uh, it will be replacement and upsizing of multiple mains, and that will improve pressure in some areas. We have areas where we need looping or where we need back feeds to improve the reliability and continuity of service. Um, that has been estimated at $1.5 million for a total loan of $3.5 million. The rate on this project, because there is a conservation aspect to the projects in and of themselves, GFA lowers that interest rate. It is 2.28% for 20 years. And this was factored into our 2024 budget. We actually budgeted a higher loan amount and it has brought that back down. So we are asking for approval of these loan documents so we can go ahead and get started on these important projects. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council, this time you have a full for a motion. Make a motion that we approve the GFO drinking water from all we want. Second. I have a motion and a second. Council, any discussion? For those of you still with us, thank you for hanging out and being with us present through this. Uh, this is a major step in us rehabbing our current existing infrastructure, and this is not the only step we are taking, so I appreciate you. No other discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed, say. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Item number nine, consideration approval of change order number one. Okay. 
So this evening, um, you will recall that when our USDA project, which is, consists of two items, it's the plant expansion, and then it is also changing our discharge outfall, which required new 16-inch effluent force main to be constructed from the plant over to Long Swamp Creek. When this project was originally bid out in 2022, the 16-inch effluent force main was designed within a Georgia Power pole line, a transmission easement. We still had to obtain our own easements across those properties that were being affected. And we were unsuccessful in getting the middle piece, which was incidentally the largest parcel. As we navigated through those issues, Turnip Seed, our engineers of record for this project, looked at a couple of different alternatives, one of which has been approved. We have the easements, and T. Stanco, our contractor, is currently constructing in that alignment. It's not significantly longer. There's not a great distance amount that changes, uh, that is requiring this change order. What is requiring the change order, though, is the significant topography changes from the Georgia Power easement to our new alignment of the force main. Uh, significantly more up and down. It needs more clearing. There is significant tree work removal that has to be done along this easement. There is actual road replacement and rehab that we will need to do. And because at a certain point in the alignment, the force main actually changes essentially to gravity. And so it is racing downhill. And you need some control structures to slow that flow down. And so those are four very large structures that were not planned for in the original, uh, when this was originally bid out. T. Stanco brought to uh, us at the last USDA progress meeting a change order request for labor. This extends the project by 60 days for the additional materials, uh, for the additional clearing and grubbing, for the concrete that now must be poured, for rehab of the easement area because we're no longer going through a power line easement, which is essentially clear. This is full of obstacles. Uh, the amount is $907,000 for this change order. Uh, this is actually less than what they have put into some of the extra work that they have done on behalf of, of their work on this project. And it has been reviewed by Lamar Rogers, our engineer of record, and we are asking for approval so that they may continue. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Council, you have the floor for a motion. Make a motion we approve the change order. I have a motion to have a second. We'll second that. I have a motion and second. Any discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, say. Thank, Thank you, Council. You. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Under committee reports, A, public safety and judicial. Mr. Hanna, you are on your own this evening, sir. <laughs> Once again. Uh, no, just want to uh, say congratulations to our police force and your development of staff. It's great to see Sergeant Long up here tonight and all putting in some kudos to you and your team. Also want to promote Coffee with a Cop. Um, will be held May 20th at 6 p.m. at the Carriage House. Come have a discussion, fun um, topic, and, and learn more from our police department. And then I um, can't mention our, our fire department give them a plug. So a burn ban is effect. Uh, May 1st to September 30th, and our uh, municipal court, we got our uh, metal detector machine in, and I uh, saw pictures tonight, it looks great, so everything's operational there, so good to go. Thank you, sir. We do have a capital improvement project going on at the fire department, <coughs> so concrete work is underway, should be wrapped up, sir. Oh, perfect. Thank you, sir. Committee B, Parks and Properties, Mr. Fouts, Mr. Hale. We're still waiting to hear back from the Cherokee Nation about pro Park. Also, too, we're finally going to be able to get doors swinging enough. We just got to find today for a grand opening. And I'm very excited about that. And then um, Jasper City Park Duck Pond, uh, we're going to hold a town hall uh, so we can capture the voice of the uh, 
the, uh, our residents here on May 21st, 6 p.m. at uh, Chattahoochee Tech. So we'd love to, for you to come out, give your support, and let us know what you'd like to see. Thank you. Can you see Enterprise Fund, Mr. Looning, Dr. Parker? Quest Water Plan Expansion continues to move along um, with a projected uh, finish date October of this year. Um, we have already mentioned the uh, force lane affluent. I think the biggest news, which I think we may have touched on last month, but it's been confirmed in writing from EPD that they have approved our uh, original uh, first item in our consent order that is going to evaluate the possibility of having surface water in our mines, which would be a, a great win if that turns out to be the case. Um, and um, I think I think those are the main uh, topics I need to mention. Thank you for approving the uh, change order on the uh, Stanco that's uh, going to keep our project moving. Thank you, gentlemen. Committee D, Development and Local Infrastructure. Dr. Proctor, Mr. Faust. Exciting developments, obviously, some big, big topics tonight. But um, again, I appeal to the sympathy of the public to wade through these, help us wade through these things, and uh, appreciate um, their understanding of uh, council's strong ability to navigate these waters. Well, I'll just say I appreciate what Miss Mary does, um, what Kim has done, and the mayor. I also appreciate your. Uh, efforts that you put toward this committee to help us guide the city hopefully grow smart and uh, and grow in the right direction i think we're working that way so i appreciate you thank you thank you i'll add one thing we we did discuss at our last meeting uh, uh what, we're, what we have titled the community development director which it's not been formalized yet but that that will be coming uh forth before of uh, enterprise, I mean, the uh, before admin and uh, in our committee in the next uh, 30 to 45 days. So, be more to, more to, more to come. Thank you, gentlemen. Committee E, Finance and Administration, Mr. Lynn. Uh Continuing work on uh, human resource uh, policies and procedures. Um, in the finance area, the uh, audit is essentially completed. Uh, expect them to be given a report in June. They have to give a report in June because it needs to be filed uh, by the end of the month. So uh, we will uh, be having the uh, audit group join us. Uh, we did pass some budget amendments uh, uh, the other day and uh, moved in. Seeing no other committee reports, council, the next item on the agenda is an executive session. Yield the floor for a motion. We make the motion that we go to the executive session. Have a motion around the second. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion, Council? All in favor? Aye. Opposed, same. Thank you, Council. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us this evening. We are headed into executive session. <laughs>